Hi, I'm Maria, K-8 Math Specialist, Educational Therapist, and today Christopher Walken and I are going to teach you how to play Trash Get Ball. Trash Get Ball is a great game for working on that rote memorization, assessing whether or not students know facts. It's great for not just math facts, but you could also use it for history, sight words, um, spelling sight words. You could use it for all kinds of things. In this instance, I'm using it for multiplication fact practice, but again, if you have a younger class, you could focus on addition facts, facts to 10, doubles. So basically, the way Trash Cabal works is that you have teams of students who answer questions that rely on memorization in exchange for opportunities to throw their trash balls into the trash kit can or the trash kit. The way I usually do it is I have each team work together to answer three to five questions. Every question that they get right, they get an opportunity to throw the trash kit ball into the trash kit. And each correct answer, each uh, throw that makes it into the trash, kit, trash can earns their team a point. Trash ball is probably the easiest game to set up and also is always a class favorite. It doesn't take much to get going. All you really need are some pieces of scrap paper that you can ball up into um, trash kit balls and, and also a, a fairly clean trash can. And the reason why I say fairly clean is that I do have students take the trash kit balls out of the trash can and reuse them just so that we're not wasting a lot of paper. Another thing that you could use um, but you don't need is some kind of tape to mark spots on the ground. I like to set up different stations around the room a little bit like the game horse. I usually make a couple of them easy and increase them in difficulty leading to a few that are more difficult than others. So how do you know when you're done with trash ball? You can play till a certain number of points. You can play in the time that you have. You can have an ongoing tournament going in your classroom. There's lots of ways that you can set this up. If you have an older class that has mastered facts one through 12, you can have them focus on things like square roots, squares, uh, negative, positive numbers, all kinds of things that they can do mentally. Because this game can be very auditory is to also make sure that I write the questions down somewhere on the board, on overhead, on wherever. The students might also be able to look at the problem. Uh, and I also try to make it so that there, there are problems that students can solve mentally without too much of a challenge. If students do need paper and pencil as an accommodation, I allow it. We want to focus on students practicing and becoming more fluent with these facts and not necessarily relying too much on just auditory processing. It's a really fun one and students frequently ask to play it. And again, once you teach this game, you can use it for all kinds of facts that require memorization across subjects. So it is versatile and fun.